What's up, folks? How's it going? You guys doing all right today? You having a good, good Monday? I hope you are. I hope you are. Whew, let's get set up here, shall we? Welcome to the show, folks. Welcome to the show. This is, of course, the NES Happy Hour with Fitz and Master G. Now, you're probably wondering where Fitz, my loyal co-host, is. Fitz, that lovable Boston Terrier. Fitz! Oh, on cue. Fitz, come on, buddy. Come on, maybe I got apples or marshmallows for you. He opened the door. I want him to make an appearance, but I don't know if he will. You coming, buddy? Come on, say hi to the people. They want to see you. There he is. My loyal canine co-host, Fitz for Fitzgerald. And I, I, of course, am Master G, your main host. This is my channel, Retro Gaming Adventures with Master G. And this is the NES Happy Hour. It's our live, unscripted, unedited, variety game show happy hour extravaganza. So thank you for tuning in. Let me tell you a little bit about what we do here on the show. We play retro video games. Uh, specifically, games from my own personal collection from the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original. That's right, it's our mission on the NES Happy Hour to play through every single original Nintendo game released in the 80s and 90s, licensed and unlicensed. We're going to get there one day. This is number 116, I believe, our 116th episode. We're nearing the end of Season 6. We do more than just the gameplay, though. We feature very unique and original cocktail recipes that we mix up and we enjoy on the show. We also take a look at the game manuals, the box art, all that. You know, talk about ma game manuals from back in the day when games used to come with pretty manuals that told you how to play. They were kind of neat, they were collectible. I actually collect those as well. I have, a, I have it right here for the game we're gonna play. I've scanned it into the computer, I'm gonna share it with you. And then, of course, we do the gameplay segment, but we close every show with a bar trivia challenge. It's like a little little segment where I play the game show host, and you live viewers, you get to be the contestants. You get to play along at home, shouting out your answers, A, B, C, or D. Go five for five. We got five difficult questions to go with today's game. And you're probably wondering, what is today's game? Well, it's a game called Silkworm. That's right, Silkworm. But it's not about silkworms. It's, uh, it's like a military game. So uh, in this exciting rendition of the arcade mega hit, Silkworm, you are challenged alone or with a friend to take on the roles of Robert or Stacy, elite members of the Silkworm team. So Silkworm is like the code name for your military operative squad. Their assignment and yours is to command the G Cobra attack helicopter and the B Panther interceptor jeep to combat and destroy the MHC2, an artificial brain of the future, which has taken over the military forces and weapons of the world's population, forcing them to worship him as a god. So it's kind of got like a Terminator thing going, some, some super artificial intelligence taking over the world and only we can stop it. This exciting game features simultaneous two-player interaction and challenges you to master the controls of two uniquely individual vehicles, the Bee Panther Jeep and the G Cobra Helicopter. Join the Silkward team, take on the challenge of MHC2 and the military firepower of the world. Man, good to see you guys all in the chat. Looks like we got Adrian here. Good to see you over there across the pond somewhere. Demos, I don't know where you're from, but I'm glad to have you. Thanks for showing up. I hope you stick around to the end. We got some good bar trivia for today's show. Good cocktails too. Andrew Hill's putting peaches all over. What does the peach emoji mean? Can someone tell me? I'm just kidding. I don't know. Thank you, though. Uh, looks like you're, if you're having some chat lag, sometimes you can fix that by refreshing. We are streaming on ultra-low latency, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't lag. If there is lag, it's got to be on your end. Um, sometimes you can set the mode. I, I think there's some settings for the live stream you can choose if you're having trouble with, difficult, with, uh, with the lag. But um, good to have you all. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's good to see some new faces in the chat. I love, I love seeing new faces. All right. Let's get to the cocktail recipe. I'm going to let little Fitz out. 
<clears throat> there you go, buddy. And then I'm going to tell you all about this, uh, this lovely little cocktail we've prepared for you today. Call it the Heel of Death. That's right, the Heel of Death. It's actually named after some sort of enemy in the show. I, we'll read about it in the game manual. After we do the cocktails, we'll do the game manual. I'll tell you all about the heel of death. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a chopper, like a helicopter that you have to attack when you're in the Jeep level. We call it the heel of death, and uh, it's a rough one, folks. It's a simple drink, but you must love tequila because it starts with two ounces of tequila and a glass stirred over ice. Then you're going to want to add Sinar. Now, if you've tuned in earlier in Season 6, you learned all about Sinar and what Sinar is. Our resident mysterious mixologist, Paracluie626, uh, has, has taken a liking to this particular mixer. And uh, what Sinar is, is, in, is a, it's, a, it's a sweet slash bitter liqueur uh, derived from the artichoke. That's right. It's an artichoke flavored liqueur so that's what the heel of death is two ounces of tequila one ounce of cyanar or two parts tequila one part cyanar stirred over ice garnished with a lemon twist i got time for that and that makes you one stiff cocktail we like to call the heel of death so cheers folks i hope you enjoy it i'm going to be drinking mine along with the sh along with you on the show live here uh but as we always say it's a master G, do not condone of underage drinking of any kind. So if you're not of legal drinking age, wherever you may reside in the world, do not mix yourself up the heel of death. It burns. It burns to start. It burns to finish. It burns for minutes after you drink it. Instead, we have a lovely little non-alcoholic alternative we call the bumblebee. Again, named after an enemy in today's game. Some some craft is called the bumblebee. I'm sure it's a fly. I'm sure it's aircraft. We'll, we'll read about it in the manual. But we got a non-alcoholic mocktail for you. We call it the bumblebee. It's got a little sting. A little sting in it. No, it doesn't really. It's actually, it's actually an ounce of fresh honey. So you start with fresh honey. That's where it gets the bumblebee name. You know, that aspect of this particular mocktail. Then you want to add two ounces of green tea, two ounces of black tea, serve it all over ice, garnish it with a lemon twist. It's basically an iced tea. It's like a hybrid green tea, black tea, homemade iced tea with a whole lot of honey in it for sweetness. And uh, serve that over ice, garnish it with a lemon twist, and you got yourself one bumblebee which i promise will taste a lot better than the heel of death uh unless you're a big fan of tequila so this bumblebee drink of course comes fits approved there is no alcohol in it, in it of any kind it is fun for all ages you basically just need a green tea bag and a black tea bag and a little bit of honey and you're all set you make your tea you brew your tea you add the honey and then you add the ice at the end to cool it all off so there you go the bumblebee mocktail cheers folks i hope you have something to enjoy today on the show if not if you don't want to mix up any of these or if you don't have the ingredients that's fine too grab your favorite drink grab your favorite snack settle in tell you about these goals real quick above me g club pay channel membership it's only 99 cents a month can you can you possibly afford not to become a g club member we have two members so far don't we fitz we got two we got two members. Once we get five members, I'm going to give you two more special emotes in the chat. Demos, I see you and those awesome emotes. If you were to join the G Club, you would unlock four, count them, four exclusive emotes to spam in the chat. The G Club. You also get a loyalty badge depending on how many months you've been a member. And like I said, it's only 99 cents. Once we get to five, I'm going to add two more exclusive emotes. We'll pick a new goal and a new perk. Uh, but I remain committed to uh, leaving our membership prices here on Retro Gaming Adventures Master G to the low, low price of 99 cents. I want it to be as accessible and affordable to everyone as possible. Show your support. Join the G Club. It's only 99 cents. You can also subscribe. That's free. If you haven't done so already, I would strongly encourage you to subscribe because all you have to do to subscribe is click the button. We broke 2,000 subscribers over the weekend. We're on our way to 10,000, and that means... When we get to 10,000, we unlock the t-shirt store. And uh, I got some good ideas for some designs. A t-shirt for every game in the NES library. But I can't sell them to you. 
I can't even show you what they are until we get 10,000 subscribers. So tell all your friends, tell all your family, share the videos, share the channel links, post my videos all over your social media, send everyone here, tell them to subscribe, tell them what they're missing out on. We got to get 10,000 so we can unlock that store. And then, of course, if you want to make a donation, it all goes to the game fund. Right now, we're saving up for Die Hard on the NES and the original Die Hard manual. Together, worth about $180. Pop on over to our website, www.fitsandmasterg.com. If you would like to make a donation, you can leave a little message. It's the Streamlabs website. Your message will appear at the very top of the screen. And, uh, you know, I thank you for your uh, contributions. All right, let's talk about this game manual. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Let's have a look together. Let's see if there's anything we need to know about how to play Silkworm on the NES. I've never played this game before. I don't have a clue how it works, any of the controls. I thought it was about silkworms, like the worms that, that make silk. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't really think it was about silkworms. But seriously, what a weird name for a game. I bet this game didn't sell well because people, people heard about it. Silkworm? Oh, that sounds dumb. I'm not going to... I'm not going to pay $50 in 1990 for that game. There's the seal of quality, your safety precautions, and the story. The solution is turned into a problem. Man, solution to war, the artificial brain, MHC2, has somehow overridden its programming and is turning our own weapons against us. We are the top secret defense program codenamed Silkworm. We utilize unique weaponry and maneuverability of the Silkworm attack helicopter and the silk worm interceptor jeep to infiltrate defenses eradicate the threat takes every ounce of team strength reflexes and determination mhc2 that super brain it's ultimatum surrender worship me as your god or die intelligence commands or intelligence recommends extreme caution beware of MHC2's trickery. The world is anxiously waiting will the silkworm team succeed or will they fail only time will tell so this is your screen display. You got your lives remaining on the top left. Jeep lives, helicopter lives. Your current level, you get badges, promotions. It's like straight up military service here. You got you got ensign and lieutenant and you just work your way up somehow. You got bonus badges and your score indicator. Okay, so when you're uh, moving your Jeep, left and right move the Jeep, left and right. Up moves the cannon to the left it'll make sense because it'll be like it'll be like pointing straight up out of your jeep so if you turn it to the left by pushing up it goes that way right goes that way i think and then the helicopter is even easier up down left right controls the helicopter there you go so use the control pad to move the chopper in eight directions a button angles the fire downward b button fires the cannons holding down the b button results in continuous firing when you're driving your jeep around left and right moves the vehicle only up and down rotates your cannon a button jumps because your jeep can jump somehow b button fires the cannons hold it down continuous firing select button indicates your choice of vehicle at the opening screen you get to decide which of these two lovely vehicles you take into battle on each level do you want to fly the chopper do you want to fly drive the jeep Start button begins, it also pauses, and uh, that's about it, right? Okay, seven waves and a final confrontation. One player, two player mode supported. Battle your way to reach the base of MHC2. Singular player game, you choose either vehicle. In the two player game, one person gets the Jeep, one person gets the chopper. You start with three each. Once you've gained 50,000 points, you get an extra life. They're both equipped with cannons. By capturing the twin item, your firepower is doubled. Your vehicle speed can be increased by capturing the turbo item. You're only allowed two additional continues. When they're gone, the game over sign appears. At the end of each wave, you'll, you'll be confronted by a major enemy sent by the computer to destroy you, the boss. They're very powerful. They're heavily armored. They have weak points, though. Watch for the white flash of a hit being scored. You will be rewarded with some great graphics if your mission is successful, so keep trying. Good luck. Okay. You got your continue options. Here you go. You got your shields. It appears when you destroy a landmine. If you capture it, your vehicle is surrounded by an energy field and you're invincible. Another option you have with this item is to continue to shoot its energy field or touch it while maintaining another field. It turns red, explodes, destroys all enemies on the screen. You got your badges, your ensign's badge, B 
Begin wave one with this badge. As bonus items are picked up, the bars next to it fill a color. After you get the fifth bonus item, you're promoted to lieutenant. Five through nine bonus items qualify you for this badge. 10 through 14, and you get awarded the honor of the commander's badge. And then the illustrious captain's badge, capturing and retaining 15 or more bonus items, qualifies you for the prestigious award of captain's badge. It also allows you to retain your twin sphere firing power for literally the rest of the game. Maxed out upgrades to all your weapons until the game ends, if you can somehow reach the rank of captain. Bonus items, the twin sphere. It appears if you capture, only if you capture no other bonus items, it allows your vehicle to double the firepower. Turbo card, it allows your vehicle to dramatically increase its speed and maneuverability. You got your eagle emblem. Eagle Emblem appears in wave four or five. If you capture it, you get 100,000 points. Remember, 50,000 points is an extra life, so that's got to be like two extra lives. Bonus Pod. It appears if the player retained a Twin Sphere and a Turbo Card, adds 10,000 points. Then the Condor Emblem. It appears in, instead of the Eagle Emblem only, and only if you have the Condor Badge. I don't remember the Condor Badge. If you capture it, your score will be increased by 500 thousand points that's like 10 extra lives here are your enemies the mh raven the vulture the hawk the red dog the white dog the mad dog the green dog and the demon dog fits which dog are you fits fits the people want to know which dog are you are you the red dog the white dog are you the mad dog you're the sleepy dog. I don't think there is a sleepy dog enemy in this game. But we'll see. Oh, the snakehead, the hopper, the bomber, the hover blade, the hornet, the transport, the stingers, the shark bite, the barracuda, the rat hopper. I think he's the rat hopper. The jackal, the streaker, streaker, the gray snake, the metal snake, the steelhead, the silver snake, the anti grav mine. The snake head, the arrow, the fish hook, the bounder, the stealth ship, the turret, the tank, the AV, the multi gun, the hank. Not just a tank, a hank. Robo head, the snapper, the cannon, the shielded silo, the tri cannon, the landmine, the defense wall, the laser shine, your seekers, your venoms, your silkworms, your silkworm twos, and your main targets, of course. HC sends a powerful enemy to prevent you from moving from one wave to another. Should he defeat you, you must begin that wave over from its start. They have enormous firepower, special defenses, and large resistance values. You should attack them with extreme caution. Wave 1 boss, the Destructor. Wave 2 boss, the Heal of Death. Cheers. Wave 3 boss the turtle shell, wave four, the scorpion, wave five, the clam shell. Wave six is when you square off against the bumblebee. Cheers. Wave seven's the battle cruiser. And then the final confrontation is with that super brain computer, MHC2 himself or herself. I don't know. It's a computer. Hints, avoid contact with all indestructible enemies, especially the Silkworm and Venom missiles. Missiles can be avoided by the helicopter if it flies at the very bottom of the screen. It does not apply against the main enemies at the end of a wave. Use the different capabilities of both vehicles to cover each other in the two-player game. Two-player mode is where it's at, folks. Try to rapidly shoot the second vehicle, Snakehead before it actually forms. With a little practice, you'll be rewarded with two bonus items instead of one. Each wave's main enemy has one or two vulnerable spots. The white flash helps you know where the vulnerable spots are. Helicopters are especially effective against main enemies which descend from the top of the screen. Match your descent, keep firing, and that's all you get. 90 day limited warranty, compliance with FCC regulations, and the back cover, folks. You guys ready? Have I, have I, have I satisfied your curiosity? Do you want to see the gameplay? Like I said, I, I promise you, I've never played this game before in my life. This is going to be a first run trial run for me today. 
If you are a G Club member, now is the time to spam the blowing it emote. We're playing original hardware, not emulation. Sometimes you have to blow in the cartridges. I'm just kidding. Don't ever blow in your Nintendo cartridges. First try. All right. Let's go. Let's get after it. Oh, man. Do I going to mute my thing here? Mute my TV. Oh, that's good soundtrack. It conspired to take over the world in order to rule over man as their god. The MHC2. Robert, Stacy, get in the G Cobra and B Panther. Roger. Green guy or pink guy? Sammy. Sammy is the uh, maker of this one, guys. All right, one player. Do you want to be the helicopter or the Jeep? Let's try both. Let's start off with the chopper. Whoa. I like this. It's hard. I like how the I like how the Oh, I spoke too soon. What's that thing? I'm paying attention to the ground targets. I need to pay more attention. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no. Man, that thing is uh takes a lot of takes a lot of shots to kill that thing, eh? Good lord. What was that enemy? This is gonna be a button masher, guys. This is gonna be a real button masher. Oh, that was the that was the shield I was supposed to pick up to be invincible. Messed that up. Man, what's this gonna be like if I ever play as the, uh... If I ever play as the Jeep? Do I have to drive around on the ground? Alright, this game's pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie, this game's pretty fun. It's, it's already hurting my thumbs, though. What do you guys think? First impressions? What do you got? Let me know. Ooh. 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 What's with this thing? It's like unkillable. Got like heat seeking missiles coming at me. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Ah! Is this boss? Alright, boss time. Wave one boss. What do we got? Oh. Ah! I almost beat it. Okay, that was our warm-up run. That was our warm-up run. Can't believe it's gonna make me continue from the beginning. That sucks. That's not good. Lost a life already. Lost a life already. Did anybody have this game when they were young? Let us know in the comments. Are there any tips and tricks you'd like to share with me? I guess I could just hold the B button down. I guess I don't have to mash it. The tank took a lot. Oh, these are the these are this is the thing that turns into the turns into the uh, guy. I don't like this guy. Two little heat seekers. Now I'm invincible. I haven't seen too many items to pick up other than that goofy shield I just got. Like, I don't... Oh, come on! Lame. Lame. Maybe I'll have better luck in, in Jeep mode. Trying to kill it! 
But I can't. It's unkillable. Game over. It's a hard one, guys. It's a hard one. I mean, my first impressions are positive. It's fun. It's fun. Let's try the Jeep. Maybe we'll do better with the Jeep. Oh no, that is, that is not easier. I mean, I feel safer here on the ground. I won't lie, I feel safer down here. How am I supposed to- Oh, I can jump. I forgot I can jump. That's right. You don't, you don't, like, intuitively think that you can jump in the Jeep, but you can. Jumping is a thing. That's what you gotta do here. Twin. Twin. Oh, it, I forgot. I thought it was gonna come to me. Oh, no. Oh. I got a power up and I wasn't even able to pick it. Wasn't even able to get it. It's got a button mash. Wave one. Oh! Alright. I'm just gonna run it. I'm just gonna go right up here and I'm just gonna run it. Nothing will get through my, uh... If I just button mash, nothing will get through it. Jeep. Jeep is the way to go, guys. Jeep. I just gotta be careful about jumping over things. Oh, two-player mode would be so fun in this game. Don't you think? Twin Turbo! Oh, I'm killing it in this run. This is this is the run. Oh, my thumbs are getting tired though, guys. My thumbs are getting real tired. Ooh. That thing. Whatever that power up is. Oh, I'm faster. I'm just like, "Oh, yeah, that's nice." Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I like this. This is good. This is where it's at here. Right here. But how do I how do I hit the weak spot if if I'm in the Jeep? Oh, come on, I died though. Oh, but I'm still alive, I'm still alive. Woo! We beat wave one! In the Jeep. Excellent. 26,800 points. Booyah! Alright. But I lost all my power-ups. Now I gotta get all my power-ups back. That sucks. That means more button mashing. Oh, big jumps. Oh, 
Oh! Dang it. Alright, that's okay. That's okay, shake it off, shake it off. We got this. We need to get extra lives though. Whoa, they're bouncing. New enemies. Oh, it's that thing. Excellent. Whoa! I don't like that. I I don't like that that they're coming at me from two a two from both sides. Get this, get this guy again. Card. Oh, this is so good. What? How did I kill that thing? Ah, oh. lame, lame. You gotta hit it right on the nose. Right on the nose. Alright, this is a pretty fun game. It's pretty addicting. I'm not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. It's pretty addicting, but it would be a lot of fun with two player. Don't you agree? Like, one of you could be the helicopter, one of you could be the jeep. Teamwork makes the dream work. Hmm. Okay, okay. Here we go. We did pretty good with the Jeep. Let's see if we can figure out the chopper, because we did not do pretty good with the chopper. No, we did not. Just gonna hit the reset button on that. That was, uh, not good. I'm pretty good with the Jeep. I'm not good with the chopper. I feel like he's just weak. Like I can't I can't kill things as easy. And I can't kill that thing at all. I mean, how many shots do I got to do I got to put down on this guy? Seriously, he's unkillable. What the heck? He certainly wasn't unkillable in the Jeep. I think I'm trying to figure out what, what I'm missing here. Like, I can't kill that bot. Forget it. We're playing the Jeep. We're just gonna go Jeep mode. I'm good at the Jeep. <laughs> Haker! New face in the chat. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Have you ever played Silkworm for the NES before? Neither have I. <laughs> but it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun once you get the hang of it. And it would be even more fun with two-player mode. Because one of you gets to be the Jeep, and the other one gets to be the helicopter. Uh, the Jeep is better, if you're wondering. I 
think I've proven that. You would think the helicopter would be more fun, but you would be wrong. Because for some reason the helicopter doesn't have the same firepower. Like, the jeep kills things a lot quicker than the helicopter does. The helicopter needs like a bajillion shots to kill some, kill these like little mini bosses. The only thing that's tricky with the jeep is you have to jump o you have to remember to jump over these things. See look, I, I hit this guy with the helicopter like a million times. Oh, I'm just gonna hit the reset button. We're gonna go next. Go next. Yuri! I haven't seen you all season! How you been in the chat? Season 6, episode 16. This is our last week in season 6. Our very last. And then we're gonna play some other games and do do PC Pandemonium and Mystery Box Madness instead of the happy hour. Oh I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sweaty after this game, I'll tell you that. This is a game that, that's gonna make you sweaty. I think I can make one more good run in the Jeep. And then uh, then we might have to do bar trivia. Yes! Double bullets! Oh my gosh, I jumped right into his his thing. Oh, that sucks. That's alright, we'll get another chance. We'll get another chance for a for a for an upgrade here. Right? Cause there's one more Woo! Almost hate that missile. That would have been bad. That would have been real bad. Alright, here we go. This is our another this is our next last chance for an upgrade. You gotta kill this guy. Yeah. Alright, boss time. It's boss time. Unfair! What was that nonsense? What was that nonsense? All right, fine. I mean, you do this whole level over again. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from all the button mashing. I'm sweating. This is insane. Silkworm for the NES. Never heard before. It's pretty fun though. More fun than Ghostbusters. Our Friday game. <laughs> uh. I don't like that turret. That's what got me last time. That's what got me last time. All right, here we go. We gotta get this. We gotta kill this thing. That's what you need to defeat the boss. Oh, 
Look at this. Look at this rapid fire nonsense. He doesn't stand a chance now. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. Nice pretty sunset. I want another crack at that, uh, that other boss. I want to I want to beat this wave two boss. I think I got it in me. I think I got it in me. Whew. Oh, come on. He comes right at the ground. Ah. That was unfair. That was just unfair. How's everyone doing in the chat? I see a very active chat today. A lot of message retractions. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met anyone who had this game when they were younger. If you actually had Silkworm and you have some advice for me, now's the time. Now's the time to tell me about this game. Tell me what I need to know. What am I doing wrong here? I think I, I just need to keep the power, the upgrades. I just need to not get hit and lose my upgrades. That's the worst, man. You lose your upgrades, you're screwed. Oh, no! Oh. Well, that was a little unfair. back but I'm on my last life here I'm on my last life what is that thing he just stops right before my shot he just stops he's unhittable oh it's nonsense it's nonsense <sighs> well we saw wave one and wave two I don't know, what do you guys think? I'm trying to read through the chat, but everybody deleted their messages, so you must have had bad things to say. Or good things to say, I don't know. It's an interesting game, and I think it would be even more fun were it played with two players. But unfortunately, I don't have a second player. I would like to tag team it. One person in the chopper, one person in the jeep. Because I think that would make this game really fun. At least we got through two stages. At least we got to see the stage two boss. But I think that's all we're going to see on today's show. Why? 
Because it's time for Bar Trivia. That's right, folks. If you've never watched this show before, we close each and every episode of the NES Happy Hour with a Bar Trivia Challenge. That's right, folks. From now on, all of your chats will appear on the stream, live on the show, above me. If you're tuned in live, you get to play along at home. I scour the internet beforehand for five multiple choice questions. I come up with some pretty hard questions. I take it all over the place. They're always somehow connected in theme with the game we play on today's show, on, on whatever day's show it is. Today, of course, the Bar Trivia Challenge Silkworm edition on the NES Happy Hour. We'll start with a warm-up question. They'll get harder as we go. I always save my favorite one for last. And guessing is encouraged. It's very hard to go five for five on my bar trivia challenge. I come up with some pretty good, pretty good questions. They're pretty difficult. So if you ever do go five for five, you get a spot in our Hall of Fame. It's only been done a handful of times. It does not happen often. Are you guys playing? Let me know if you're playing in the chat. I'll make sure I give you time to answer in case there's some lag. Because we're going to get started and dive right in with question number one. Are you guys ready? It's this. Question number one. Yup, that's right. This bar trivia challenge is all about the silkworm. Not, not the game, the silkworm. Not the game silkworm that we played on today's show, but the actual silkworm. The actual bug that uh, produces silk. Ha! <laughs> How much, you, how much do you know about silkworms? Well, if you don't know anything, you should still guess because, uh, you know, you'll learn something today. Which country was the first to cultivate silkworm farms for the purposes of producing textiles as early as 2696 BC? Yes, where? Where in the world in 2600 BC did they first cultivate silkworm farms in order to produce silk was it a china was it b japan was it c egypt or d australia Buri, now that you saw the answers you still going with d i'll give the rest of you 10 seconds to think about it i'm going to start the clock now let's see those guesses in the chat which country was the first Cultivate the silkworm. I don't see any guesses. I don't see any guesses. You guys are stumped. You're stumped by my first bar trivia question from the silkworm uh, edition of the show. All right. If we have no takers, I'll reveal the answer. No live viewers want to venture a guess? The correct answer is A, China. That's right. The silkworm originally farmed, that's right, raised, cultivated on silkworm farms for the purposes of producing actual silk for textiles as early as 2696 BC, a very long time ago. Now, if you guys were guessing and uh, your guesses are just showing up now. We've got some serious chat lag. But uh, I have the settings set the way they always are, ultra low latency. So if you're having some chat lag, try refreshing your browser. We're going to move on to question number two and see if it's any quicker for you. All right, here we go. Question number two. They're going to get harder. This was your warm-up question. <sighs> you silkworm experts out there, you better, you better get hyped. Question number two is this. Besides the silkworm, what is the only other insect that humans have domesticated for the purposes of industrial farming? Besides the silkworm, what's the only other insect that humans have domesticated specifically for the purposes of industrial farming? Is it A, crickets, B, Grubs, C, bees, or D, ants. Hmm. Those are your choices. Crickets, grubs, bees, or ants. Besides the silkworm, 
what is the only other insect that humans have domesticated for the purposes of industrial farming? 10 seconds on the clock. I'll start it now. I'm gonna have more of my Helideth cocktail. Looks like Adrian's going with C, bees. That's right. Oh no, Adrian's going D. Oh no, no. Adrian's going C for bees. Not Bury is going B for C's, C for bees. The correct answer is bees, but not B. C is the correct answer. Bees. You are correct, Adrian. Congratulations. Thanks for thanks for it was a good guess, Bury. Grubs. They're a good uh, source of protein. They have not been domesticated for the purposes of industrial farming. We are, of course, talking about bees. The honeybees. Honeybees for making honey. That's right. All right. Two questions up, two questions down. Shall we proceed to question number three? I'll cue it up. It is this. The fabled Silk Road, that's right, of ancient times was a series of trade routes that started in China, where they first started to make silk from silkworms, and ended at which body of water? Did the fabled Silk Road trade routes end at A, the Pacific Ocean, B, the Atlantic Ocean, C, the Indian Ocean, or D, the Mediterranean Sea? We all know the Silk Road started in China, but where did it end? You have 10 seconds. Get your guesses in the chat. I'll start the clock now. Fitzy wants to say congratulations. Congratulations. You guys are both going with B. I think, or maybe Adrian's just guessing B. I think Bury hasn't guessed yet. You must be lagging. But I will reveal the answer. It is da, 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 da. D, the Mediterranean Sea. That's right. Most, if not all, of the trade routes that were known as the Silk Road ended at the Mediterranean Sea. There's a very legendary trade route that stretched all the way from ancient China to the Mediterranean Sea and uh, all sorts of spices. I mean, it was called the Silk Road because China was the only one, the only area on the globe that figured out how to farm silk from the silkworm. Do you guys know what? You know how they make silk? Do you want me to tell you about how they make silk from silkworms? Okay, so the silkworm is like a is like a larval or pupa form of some other insect, right? And they make cocoons. You know, cocoons like a butterfly. They actually spit like their saliva is the silk. So they actually spit strands of silk into a cocoon. And uh, that's what they live in. In order to farm silk, you have to you have to like steam it while the the worms inside it, and get it out without breaking any of the strands. Because eventually, what the silkworm will do when it when it hatches out of the cocoon, it'll chew its way around the silk cocoon, which is one continuous strand of silk that just loops over and over and over and over again, like a thousand times. It's like, it's like hundreds of meters long. And that's how they actually farmed silk. It was very desirable back in ancient times. People wanted silk and the only place to get it was China. So they uh, created these elaborate trade routes that stretch all the way from China in Eastern Asia, all the way to the Mediterranean Sea where all the these exotic goods like silk from China could be distributed to the European nations. So that's the Silk Road, guys. Question number four is the hardest one. Fitz, you're in a really licky mood right now. Why are you so licky? Did you know that silkworm diets consist of only one single food source? Well, now you know. But the question is, not did you know the question is what which of the following 
is the only thing that a silkworm eats. Believe it or not, silkworm, the silkworm eats only one thing, one single thing the silkworm eats. What is it? Is it A, mulberry leaves? Is it B, durian nectar, that weird spiny fruit that smells like feet? C, bamboo fiber from the bamboo forest? Or D, other silkworms? It's a known fact. The silkworm will not eat anything except one of these four choices. The only thing in the silkworm diet, a single food source, will not eat a single other thing except this. Which is it? A, mulberry leaves, B, durian nectar, C, bamboo fiber, or D, other silkworms. You have 10 seconds. I'll start the clock now. This is question number four. It's the hardest one. I mean, unless any of you are raising silkworms, do you have a do you have a silkworm farm at home? A hobby? Are you hobbyists? Are you hobby silkworm farmers? Any of you? No, no. Adrian, you think it's D? Other silkworms? Mm, cannibals? Anybody else care to venture a guess? No. The correct answer is actually A mulberry leaves yeah believe it or not the mulberry leaf not poisonous not to the silkworm at least is literally the only food source of the silkworm it is a very um it's a very i don't know positive thing to uh, get your kids silkworms as a pet because it's very good for teaching them how to take care of pets. They have one food source, mulberry leaves. They make their co cocoons. They produce silk. It's very educational. It's a good learning experience, but you do have to buy mulberry leaves in order to feed your pet silkworms because it is the only food source of the silkworm. They do not eat anything else except for mulberry leaves. Google it. True story. All right, guys. That's four up, four down. You guys are being good sports. You thought this was going to be a, a trivia challenge about m choppers and jeeps in the military, but instead it was about silkworms. Are you ready for question number five, my favorite one? I always save my favorite one for last. It's this. Not just for fancy clothing, the silk produced by the silkworm is also used to manufacture which of the following items? A, books. B, bicycle tires. C, fishing line, or D, insulation. Not just, not just for fancy clothes made out of silk. We also mass produce silk from the silkworm because it's a required manufacturing ingredient in one of the following items. Which one is it? You have 10 seconds. I'll start the clock now. This was a hard one today. Today's bar trivia challenge was pretty difficult. Not too many people out there know their silkworm trivia. I'll say that. But uh, it was a joy for me to read all about the many wonderful, wonderful things we know about the silkworm today. Adrian, your guess is C, fishing line. Look, all four of these would have been great guesses. Believe it or not though, the correct answer is probably the one you least expect, bicycle tires. Yes, that's right. They actually use silk from industrial farms, silkworm farms, in the production of bicycle tires. Interestingly enough, they also use it to produce sutures, like stitches. When you get a wound, um, they'll actually use the silkworm silk to manufacture stitches. They also use silkworm silk in parachutes. So if you're, uh, if you're a skydiver, any skydivers out there, you probably knew that. That silk is, an, is a very necessary and common ingredient in the parachute you use uh, because it's very, very strong and very, very lightweight. 
Uh, it probably would have made for good fishing line, but it's not economical to use it for fishing line. Uh, books or book binding, you know, it's not used for that either. It'd be too expensive. And insulation, it would be way too expensive. But they actually weave silkworm fibers into your bicycle tires uh, for flexibility and durability um, and all that. You know, they're very thin. They're not as thick as like uh, car tires. They're not reinforced. And the roads are just as bumpy on your bicycle tires as they are on car tires. So they reinforce them with silk from the silkworm. Now you know. Thank you guys for playing. That was the Silkworm edition of the Bar Trivia Challenge on the NES Happy Hour with Fitz and Master G. I know that was a hard one. I hope you're not discouraged. I hope you guys all come back to play tomorrow because the Bar Trivia Challenge is not going away. The Bar Trivia Challenge is here to stay. It's a lasting part of the NES Happy Hour with Fitz and Master G. So I thank you guys for playing. I thank you guys for tuning in. Give yourselves... A round of applause. Woo, 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 woo. What's your name? Can you say goodbye? I thank you. Fitz thanks you. You guys are awesome. Thanks for tuning into the show today. I love having you guys, our live viewers. It's been a blast playing with you today. Got to play Silkworm for the first time. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Like the video, you know, tell us what you think. Uh, it's definitely an interesting game. Definitely one I, I think is worth adding to your collection if you can find it. Never heard of it before, so I'm glad I discovered this one now uh, and got to play it along with you on the show. So thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this episode after the fact, it's your first episode and you made it this far, I strongly encourage you to become a subscriber. Click that little subscribe now icon in the lower right corner of the video or, or click the word subscribe on the uh, YouTube channel, Retro Gaming Adventures with Master G. It's totally free. You're also going to want to turn your notifications on. It's that little bell icon. You can set up your notifications so whenever we're going live with a new video, you'll get a little alert on your phone letting you know so you can tune in and you can be along for the fun live. Why is it better to watch live? Well, I mean, we got a great crowd here. Look at all these awesome people in the chat. I mean, they're pretty They're pretty awesome. You want to be part of our crew here. Uh, you also, if you tune in live, you don't have to watch commercials. I uh, turn the monetization off for my live streams, so our live viewers do not have to endure the commercials. But if you watch after the fact, you're going to have to watch commercials every time. And uh, another reason you should tune in live is because you can play Bar Trivia Challenge. You get to actually play. You get to participate, interact with me live on the show. And how much fun is that? Right? So I hope to see I hope to see you guys soon, but I thank you for all of your kind support. And uh, we're going to be back tomorrow, same time, same place with another episode, 5 p.m. Eastern here on Retro Gaming Adventures with Master G. Do you want to know what game we're going to play tomorrow? We are going to play WWF WrestleMania. Oh, that means we're going to have two fun cocktail recipes, a great WrestleMania gameplay segment, and a wonderful five-question bar trivia challenge. If you are a wrestling fan, if you are a wrestling expert, you are sure to go five for five. I got you some good wrestling questions. So study up on your wrestling history. We're going to be playing WWF WrestleMania tomorrow. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have some drinks. We're going to read that manual, talk about the game. We're going to play it. We're going to do bar trivia, and it's going to be a blast. So don't miss out. Meet me back here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern for another great episode of the NES Happy Hour. That's going to do it for me tonight. I hope to see you again soon. Have a good night. Take care.